Welcome, everyone, to another edition of Litter Media Live. This is a special edition. She's back. Hi. <laughs> Teresa Reeve. She comes, she's getting to be a regular here. <laughs> but today, something different than what we talked about last week. We're talking about the Daughters of the American Revolution. That's the Nathaniel Massey chapter, of course. And something that they have planned for December 7th through 15th that commemorates the Boston Tea Party. Our interview today brought to you by Tomlinson Insurance. Back with Teresa Reap right after this. This is Andy Tomlinson. When insuring what's important to you, our agents are there when you need us the most. Tomlinson Insurance, for the best coverage at the best cost. Visit us online at tomlinsonins.com to learn more. Back with Teresa Reap. Uh, coming up, December 16th is actually the 250th anniversary of the Boston Tea Party. But that we're, is correct. But we're commemorating it in Chillicothe prior to that. Right. And the reason that we are doing that is because we want it open to the public. Mm -hmm. And we want to have plenty of opportunity for school children and adults to come and uh, celebrate the 250th anniversary of the Boston Tea Party with us. It's, we have a ship, 14 feet long, with a 10-foot mast on it, uh, docked at Griffin's Wharf, actually, complete with gaslight lanterns mm -hmm. leading up to it. And all of that is set up in Fellowship Hall of the First Presbyterian Church at 13 Mead Drive. Also, uh, there are seven stations set up explaining the different elements of the Boston Tea Party, what led up to it, how much tea was destroyed, who the Sons of Liberty actually were. There's just a lot of information. Each tour will come in. You'll be, it's docent-led. Mm -hmm. We'll have groups between 20 and 25 people will be in each group. You'll go through the stations, if you will, and then we will meet in the Old South Meeting Hall, a.k.a. the chapel mm -hmm. of the uh, church. The First Presbyterian is such a perfect place for this because of its federalist architectural style. Mm. That chapel looks just like a, a 1700s uh, meeting hall uh -huh. in Boston. So anyway, we'll go there for the meeting that spurred the Boston Tea Party. And from there, we'll go downstairs, actually board the ship, and toss the tea from the East <laughs> India Tea Company into the water yeah. that's been created in the Church Fellowship Hall. Now, historically, while there was, we believe, there was no shots fired, this was actually the first act of violence that right. leads to the revolution. Absolutely. It, there was no intent for anyone to get hurt or for property other than the tea to be destroyed. It was an act not against the shipping people or the people that owned the ships or the crew that was on the ship. It was an act against the British government. Mm -hmm. And the tea was thrown in. The East India Tea Company and the British government worked together to uh, export tea to the colonies at this point in time, they had decided that the colonists would have to pay a tax on that tea. And that's the colonists met at the South Meeting Hall to have a discussion about it. It got really, really excitable, and they marched down to the wharf and threw the tea into the bay. And that's the harbor, and that's what happened. So we are recreating that in the church hall. We currently have about 400 people booked uh, because the tours have to be scheduled, of right. course, because we don't want you to have to wait. So we need people to give us a call, send an email, let us know that you're interested. It's going to be a really big event. We, we put a lot of time and effort into it. Uh, I do want to thank the David Mead Massey Fund. They provided funding for us to buy the materials for this ship and an authentic cannon that we had built. So it's been, again, a community effort. Uh, it'll be something that I think everybody will want to see. You'll learn a lot 
about the real facts about the Boston Tea Party. For instance, and nobody dressed up like Indians and went whooping onto the ship. They actually wrapped woolen blankets around them and stopped at the blacksmith shop and sooted their faces and hands. Oh, okay. uh, of course, no one wanted to be recognized because it, would have, it was considered treason and the penalty would have been death. So for the local observance, which again, this is December 7th through 15th, what time each day and, and how do they get in as far as being registered to attend? Okay, the time, 9.30 to 2.30, each of those days there will be docents present. But we also will schedule special times. Like if, if you have an organization that wants to come and they can only come in the evening. We have about 10 to 12 docents that have been trained as to how to guide the tours. And so we have a lot of flexibility. And there is a, a craft bazaar on that Saturday. I believe that's the 9th. Mm-hmm. So the ship, everything will be set up there at the craft bazaar as well. And, of course, it's all free. None of, there's no charge. So because of the time frame, 9.30 in the morning till 2.30 30, 30 in the o'clock, afternoon, yeah. this is something that if they get registered, that maybe even kids from schools can yes, come in? Yes, in fact... We have several school field trips that have already been. We have three days that are completely full with school field trips. It's it's going to be an excellent hands-on learning experience for the children at all ages. The the facts are the facts, and the way they're delivered depends upon the age of the audience. Mm -hmm. How do they register? The best way is to just drop an email to me. By now, everybody on your show probably <laughs> knows my email. It's reapteresa at yahoo.com. And, of course, it's spelled a little differently, R-E-E-P-T-E-R-R-E-S-S-A at yahoo.com. And then we will get that scheduled for you. And this is... The Boston Tea Party is a really special event with Chillicothe ties Mm -hmm. as well. Most people in Chillicothe are familiar with the Willis James Bed and Breakfast. Well, the the Willis part of that was Nathaniel Willis, who was a participant at the Boston Tea Party in, uh, in Boston in 1773. He and his brother and his father... And those are documented Mm -hmm. that they were there. There are uh, 116 proven documented participants, although there were many more. But because of the fear of being charged with treason, a lot of the names never, ever became public. Which treason is punishable by death. Yes, that's correct. Now, when Willis uh, came here, he's the one that... You told me it was a, a land grant that was well, given? Well, he came here to start a newspaper. Okay. He actually, he had a print shop. He didn't work with Ben Franklin, but it was located in the same building hmm. that Ben Franklin's was in Philadelphia. And he had a newspaper there. And then, I hope I get this right, he moved to Virginia mm-hmm. and then across from, oh, he moved to Maryland first. I'm sorry, Maryland, Virginia and then to Ohio, and he started the Scioto Gazette here. So he started a newspaper, and then he became um, a farm owner uh, out off of Route 21 near, or 41, I'm sorry, near Bainbridge, and uh, that's where his grave is. It's on that farm somewhere. We don't know the exact location of the grave. But. Was there an inn there was. Or a tavern or a something tavern. like that? Yeah. He had a tavern out there. He was quite the entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. He had all kinds of businesses and lots of printing. And so he was very, he was a very wealthy, successful man. He died in 1831 out near Bainbridge. Of course, the story that's being portrayed here is about the tea party, but will there right. be a certain segment about him? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. One of our stations is about Nathaniel Willis. And his descendants 
still live in this area up around Mount Sterling, Washington Courthouse in that area, his fifth great grandson. Wow. So. <laughs> what kind of history, huh? Yeah. Hey, do you know what my grandpa did? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, not too many people can say that they that's, participated in that's that. That's exactly right. Yeah. So it's, it's going to be a real opportunity to learn accurate history that is, It's all researched and certified, and I think it's going to be a really fun experience for everybody. I think adults will enjoy throwing the tea off as much as children. Yeah. What will become of the the boat uh, once you're done with it? Well, it's pretty amazing. Two historical reenactors built the boat for us, Craig Urig and Joe Fort, knowing that it would have to be stored somewhere, so it folds. I mean, it's, it's wooden, and it comes apart in pieces and folds, and the Presbyterian Church has given us a room where we can store all of our historical oh, wow. artifacts that we use. So it'll be put away, and then it comes out in July, and we always have a session on the Boston Tea Party at Liberty Camp. I had a feeling. Yes, so it'll be right <laughs> it out there going in to July. Reappear, yeah. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So it's, this year, the first year, it was just the hull of the ship, but uh, last spring, the gentleman built the mast, Mm -hmm. and they are uh, both very, very serious historical reenactors, and I mean, they paid attention to detail on this thing. It's it's pretty amazing. Um, Another connection that we're going to have, the big celebration in Boston is going to be on the 16th, Mm -hmm. and they anticipate Hundreds of thousands of people will be in Boston for this. The Boston Tea Party Ships and Museum will be orchestrating a reenactment. And our own um, Drew Musser from the Willis James is actually going to be participating as a reenactor in Boston. He'll be there along with Joe Ford one of our reenactors that we work with a lot with DAR, and three of his other men from his militia battalion. So we're going to be really well represented from this area, the Nathaniel Massey chapter and our local area, Ross County. We'll be in Boston reenacting, and they even have to go up a week ahead uh-huh. for a rehearsal. So the, to, to be in this has... Um, they are required to make at least two trips to Boston in the early weeks of December. Right. So we're pretty excited about this. Again, that's uh, December 7th through the 15th, the Nathaniel Massey chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution, a local um, reenactment of the Boston Tea Party. But before we let you go, since yes. we've got you here, let's okay. pause on the Tea Party for a moment because you have wreaths across America on the 16th. We do. December's a busy month. Wreaths Across America was begun many years ago with one man that had extra wreaths. After He had a commercial business, and he decided, well, he would just put them on veterans' graves. Well, that has morphed into a project of over 2 million wreaths being put on gra- graves throughout the United States. Here locally, the Nathaniel Massey chapter of the DAR sponsors wreaths across America. We will be placing 1,200 wreaths on veterans' graves. The ceremony will be at noon on December 16th at Grandview, no, at Green Lawn Mm -hmm. Cemetery on Eastern Avenue at Patriot Square. We will begin there with a short ceremony and then we will begin laying the wreaths there. We put wreaths there and at other local cemeteries. The um, Eastern Star here does Patriot Square in Grandview Cemetery. But if you have a veteran in your family that you would like to just pick up a wreath and take it to ev- wherever you they're buried, like I take wreaths to Brown's Chapel, mm-hmm out on uh, Brown's Chapel Road. Then a lot of people come and pick their wreaths up and take it to their veterans' graves. doesn't have to be Revolutionary War veteran. Any veteran can have um, a wreath across America wreath. 
The wreaths are $17 a piece. And you can, uh, you can go on uh, the Nathaniel Massey DAR public Facebook page, and you'll find order blanks there for it. Or you can go to the Wreaths Across America website, and there's a link there where you can order. And then it, the order will come to us, and then you can pick them up down at Greenlawn. Is there a deadline to get ordered? Yes. The deadline is, I believe, Thanksgiving. Yeah, by Thanksgiving, they have to be ordered. Gotcha. So time's short on that. Right. And if you have my email address, shoot me a note, and I'll make sure it gets to the right people. Very good. Teresa, we appreciate everything that you and the DAR does each year to help us remember our history. Thank you. Again, Teresa Reed, Nathaniel Massey Chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution, talking about the local reenactment of the Boston Tea Party at Chillicothe First Presbyterian Church, December 7th through the 15th, and also talking about wreaths across America. Our interview today brought to you by Tomlinson Insurance. I'm Mike Smith.